for joining us today. In 1972, with growing recognition of the environmental impact of human activity, the United Nations designated June 5th as World Environment Day. With the objective of preservation and enhancement of the environment, the day has developed into a global platform for taking action on urgent environmental issues. The Federation of World Peace and Love has spent the last 20 years traveling the globe emphasizing the global citizens' interconnectedness, a message that has never rung truer than in 2020, as our entire biosphere is under assault from COVID-19. With this in mind, we are very pleased to convene the Environmental Visionaries Forum, composed of visionaries we have met in our travels. Seldom in history has such a distinguished forum been convened, composed of hereditary imperial and royal princesses and a princess, as well as heads of state from countries spanning the globe. This distinguished and visionary forum will identify the challenges we face and provide insights to overcome these obstacles to achieve a sustainable environment with conscience-based solutions. My commitment to my conscience, yes I can. My commitment to my conscience, yes I can. Say it boldly. Conscious! We can change the world if we apply our conscience. And it's time that people like you and I go deep within ourselves and become fully aligned with the voice of conscience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your decisions make you the person you are today so your conscience is the one who decides which is good and right and what you should do and should not do no meu dia a dia fazer tudo com consciência para que tenha menos impacto na natureza together we can change the world especially during that difficult times we should stay together we should help each other and be at peace mera zindagi ka maqsad hai ki main jitne se jitne logo ko is anparta ke andhe se dur kar sakun Cambiemos el mundo con conciencia y salvémoslo también. Make a commitment to my conscience. Yes, I can. Mundo con conciencia. Hagamos este mundo el mundo que todos soñamos, ¿verdad? Cambiemos el mundo con conciencia. Gracias. As we gain inspiration from our Environmental Visionaries Forum, we wish to emphasize that visionary leaders can come from any sector, and we are grateful to the numerous positive and inspirational responses we have received. 
With this in mind, we would like to share some of the many submissions from world citizens that we've received in support of today's forum. This is what we do to save the environment. We use reusable water bottles in school. We have a green bin to put our food waste in. Our own vegetables in gardening club. We will cycle batteries. We water the flowers to attract the bees. We turn the lights off to save the electricity. We pick litter to help the environment thrive. I bike to school to stop pollution. Tap off the same water. We recycle our waste paper. We can change the way our school uses solar panels to get electricity. What do you do to help the environment? Take responsibility. Be an advocate of a better environment. Every single person just did one or two plastic consumption changes. We could begin to reduce this gargantuan amount of plastic waste. We need to ensure people practice a circular economy. Participating in government policy formulation and implementation, planting of more than 500,000 trees in schools, churches, homes, gazetted forests, among other related activities. What we need uh, is a positive approach to ecology, loving the nature, being in communion with the nature, but we also need a positive approach to spiritual ecology. To give to the divine love, to eat humanity. I want to urge everybody to make sure we dispose our waste properly and appropriately, just the way I have been doing over the years. COVID-19 has created a scenario a scenario where we can see the nature cleansing as we pollute it less by this lockdown. The air we breathe is more cleaner, so can we learn from this? Save nature, save life. There is need for us as human beings to use our mind, our consciences, to be able to protect this, this environment. Let us be conscious to avoid more disaster. It is important to protect the environment for generations to come to live in harmony with nature. Conscience breeds peace. We can't achieve peace without conscience. We all have a role to play in protecting our uh, entire planet. Without no trees, stop cutting down the trees, that what I need to say. But without no trees, no oxygen, the whole world will be a desert. We won't live. We hope the message will be one of unity, coming together, and for how each one of us as individuals can make our own small little difference for the planet. We should become one, the human family, living in harmony with nature. Environment is a general belonging. It belongs to everybody and it answers the proper functioning of ecosystem. We must respect all life that exists on our planet. It is our collective duty to sustain the ecosystem with the help of each and every individual. We are here on this earth for nothing more than observe the beauty of nature. We are not entitled to harm anything. Let's always keep our environmental footprint in mind and constantly make efforts to reduce it. We need to build our earth back for our children's safe future. When we become conscious of this irrefutable connection we have with nature, we can't help but be filled with wonder, joy, and love. And we know that what we protect upstream is what we protect for any of you who is downstream. If we love the environment and protect the environment, the environment will provide for us. Let our local actions have a global positive impact in our environment. Happy Environment Day!
We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary Dr. Hong Daozi, President of the Federation of World Peace and Love. Distinguished guests and good friends from around the world, good day. Today is June 5th, World Environment Day. The United Nations urges global citizens to grow increasingly aware of the importance of environmental protection and make changes to become environmentally friendly in all aspects of their lives. 2020 is a year of actions for biodiversity. According to research, the loss of biodiversity and the degeneration of our ecosystems involve the issues of poverty, hunger, health, and sustainable consumption and production. They have an impact on our water, climate, oceans, and land. They also affect the attainment of 80% of the Sustainable Development Goals. Frequent man-made and natural disasters and conflicts remind us that the world is in jeopardy and we need to take immediate actions to ensure coexistence between people and between humans and nature and achieve balanced development so that we can build a sustainable future for humanity. Since the 20th century, humans have gradually turned their attention to the issue of environmental protection and become aware that our environment not only provides resources for human development, but more importantly, it is a biosphere. The quality of our environment has a direct impact on the existence of all humanity and other living things. The challenges we face are not limited to global warming and climate change as many scientists and experts have issued warning and declared a climate emergency. The negative effects of industrial development have impacted human lives and the alarm for the earth has been sounded. For example, deforestation has destroyed the habitats of many living things and caused an imbalance in the ecosystems. High temperatures and overly dry soils have led to wildfires, accelerating the destruction of our ecosystems. In addition, the novel coronavirus, which has spread across the globe lately, has caused economic recession, social instability, panic, and over 100,000 deaths. Various contagious diseases attributed to the ecosystem destruction have wreaked havoc across the planet in recent years. And the diseases spread even faster because of frequent transportation caused by globalization. Now the whole world has taken various precautions to stop the spread of the virus, including isolation. This might cause inconveniences for many people, but give positive influence on the environment. We have seen suspension of factory operations and flight reductions, which have significantly lower CO2 emissions. People can see distant mountains because of improved air quality in areas previously suffering from serious air pollution. People are forced to stay at home, minimizing noise pollution. The number of tourists around the world is decreasing, giving our ecosystems a break and an opportunity to rejuvenate itself as oceans and rivers have turned much cleaner and clearer and fish have started to appear in canals. From the perspective of public health, we need to face the pain and harm brought forth by the disease and work together to improve humanity's holistic health, physically, mentally, and spiritually. From the perspective of environmental science, through this pandemic, we need to understand how to maintain equilibrium between human activities 
and environmental health. When we let go of excessive desires and avoid unnecessary demands on natural resources, the earth can get a break. And this outbreak also enables us to contemplate over questions like, what messages and experiences do we get from this pandemic? How shall we coexist and thrive with nature? Incorporating environmental protection into human development is an ongoing endeavor. This pandemic reminds humans to reflect on our actions and plan for the future. The function of the heart is boundless. Our thoughts shape our current and future world. Conscience is essential for our internal environment, and unity is crucial for our external environment. With conscience, we can work together, help one another, jointly fight the virus, and enhance global citizens' well-being. As this year's World Environment Day coincides with the raging COVID-19 outbreak, it becomes even more evident that it is imperative for humans to take conscience-driven actions. When our heart have realized something profound, we won't focus our attention only on the immediate benefits. Conscience will guide us to tell right from wrong and make the right decisions. With conscience, we will put public interests before our own, and we will humbly move forward, honoring Mother Nature, which nurtures all humanity. With conscience, we will become wiser and strike a balance between economic development and environmental protection, which are intricately related and mutually affecting each other. With conscience, we will be able to learn from good examples and make the right decisions. That's treat our environment and all living things with kindness and promote the awakening of conscience in global citizens. That's inspire everyone to change the world with conscience. That's consolidate people's kind intentions to stimulate changes, allowing positive energy to spread across the planet so that the world will become stable again. That's protect ourselves and help others to conquer the pandemic and settle conflicts around the world as we foster world peace, social stability, and environmental sustainability with love and conscience. Thank you all. President of the Federation of World Peace and Love, Dr. Hong Daozi, June 5th, 2020. We are pleased to welcome remarks by the visionary Honorable Reverend Dr. Pohiva Tui Onatoa, Prime Minister of Tonga. Uh, today's uh, World Environment Day celebration is an opportunity to reflect on our conscience in commemorating the International Day of Conscience by uniting world leaders around the globe to remind all citizens of our Mother Earth to uphold and strengthen their conscience to promote a culture of world peace and love. The call for respecting the diversity of culture, ethnicity, language, religion, gender throughout the world should also be extended to respecting biodiversity. As ambassadors and caretakers of the environment, we must work together to uphold the values of peace and love. There are, after all, fruits of the spirit that the Bible tells us to advocate and encourage within our families, neighbors, and our wider communities. If we are truly to achieve unity towards the common purpose of protecting our people and environment, our conscience should be in tune with nature and our, fellow, and our fellow humanity. In light of the COVID-19 world pandemic crisis, there have been positive reports 
on the recovery of certain species and habitats around the world. Sighting of rare and endangered species have brought about hope for our recovering world. However, there remaining conflicts and political unrest within our human races, a look at the world news will show protests and upheavals in the international community. The Kingdom of Tonga is a large ocean state with 170 islands located in the Pacific Ocean. Approximately 99 of our exclusive ex uh, economic exclusive ec economic zones comprises of ocean. We do have varying degrees of conflicts within our families, communities, and within our nation that we need to address and make right in order to steer forward our progress for sustainable development. It's here, Donga commemorates Environment Day of a week-long celebration. This year, we had commenced our National Environment Week on Sunday with a televised church service, followed by a free a tree planting uh, programs with schools, national cleanup and live uh, radio programs and various topics related to the theme Protect nature, respect biodiversity, secure your life. To close our National Environment Awareness Week, we launch our first ever state of environment report. We chose this special day to remind us of God's request as stewards to take care of his creation. And we can use this report as a baseline to monitor the current state of our environment. Great efforts have gone into protecting and sustainability and sustainable managing our natural environment from voluntary com commitments of 30% marine protected areas and 100% sustainability managing our ocean space, our nationally determined contribution and disease to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and 50% renewable energy generation by 2020, just to name a few. Our national efforts might seem insignificant, but we believe our efforts will contribute to the larger global need for healthy oceans, which provides the impetus for worthwhile investment into the world's largest ecosystem to support resilience to our changing environment, food security, livelihoods, and well-being. This year's theme on nature and biodiversity is a timely reminder to us all of the nature role in providing the essential infrastructure that support life on Earth and human development, particularly under the current lockdown condition throughout the world. There is no doubt that the environment and human health are in the link, and looking after nature will have immense benefits to our well-being and our future survival. As the President of the Federation of World Peace and Love, Dr. Tong Xiao Chi calls for united hearts and conscience to overcome the challenges of the COVID pandemic. Tonga wishes to echo the sentiments of the esteemed president and recognizes that it is more crucial now than ever to embrace our diversity and join our strength to overcome our weaknesses to this pandemic and the ensuing challenges for environmental protection. As us, Donga wishes to extend its commitment in joining the international community in the quest for, for unity, love, peace, and conscience for a better world for our future generation. Malo Peter, thank you.
We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary, Her Excellency Rosalia Artiaga, former president of Ecuador. Hello, my friends of FOPAL. My name is Rosalia Arteaga. I am uh, from Ecuador, a former president of this wonderful country. And I want to share with you that I will be part of the celebration of the Environmental Day. And um, uh, I will focus the attention about what education can do in environmental issues. Because uh, we know that the behaviors of the people, that the bad habits that we had, uh, destroy the environment, destroy the earth, destroy uh, the reserves of water or good quality of air that we have. And uh, it's only through education that we can work, especially with kids, with teenagers, with young people. The only way to modify the habits is with education. And he, I will put on um, all the efforts like, like I'm doing with uh, young people and with teachers, working on educational values. One of the most important values is to be um, responsible about what's happened on the earth. We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary, His Imperial Highness, Prince Ermia Sale Silisi Hale Silisi. My name is Prince Ermia Sale Silisi, and I'm the grandson of the late Emperor Haile Silisi of Ethiopia. I would like to thank my friend Philip Bone for having organized this uh, distinguished panel today. And uh, I believe in all the messages we can find a certain level of consciousness and sustainability for future generations. As a father, I am always concerned about the future generation and the generation after them. So the question is about sustainability and accountability. In our nation of Ethiopia, where half the population is under the age of 15, this becomes even more of a concern because this is about the future and what our role in it is supposed to reflect. We face uh, so many things uh, currently that are challenges ahead of us. We have the problem of desertification, deforestation, the problem of loss of biodiversity, and also disposable of waste. These are really very major issues that we also have to study and carefully reflect on. Um, deforestation has been a problem uh, mainly because it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that has really put uh, our country, but in particular, in, in a vulnerable situation. But there are solutions. And why do we continue to treat our environment in the way, or our oceans, in the way we have continued to do without reflecting? And perhaps this is the time to think about it in more certain terms to find solutions that are widely available, but we have not been able in, to be in a position to make them applicable. So the issue of deforestation is, a, is a, something that, that, that has solutions and we, we, we need to implement it. Uh, the problem of deforestation is a problem that I think we're, we are tackling and in particular, uh, the reformist government of uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed in Ethiopia has been at the forefront of planting trees and uh, to curb this existing problem. Uh, on reflection, we also have to make sure that uh, the trees planted uh, will also uh, be able to uh, go with the ground and the environment that they're planted in. Otherwise, it becomes a self-defeating purpose. So I believe that it's a very good start. 
It has raised the awareness of and consciousness of the people. It has uh, facilitated the participation of people and the civil servants. And I think that this is a very good start. On the issue of uh, uh, biodiversity, Ethiopia has been very blessed with uh, a, a tremendous amount of uh, biodiversity and I think can contribute a great amount of uh, contribution to, to the environment. Uh, in terms of waste disposal, unfortunately, a, a majority of our people still suffer for the lack of clean water, which has been a major issue in Ethiopia. Not only has it wasted uh, our labor force, but has also been a contributor in large part to uh, major diseases that are preventable. And in this day and age that we uh, face, these are things that we can uh, confront collectively. So, by and large, um, what I feel is that uh, we have in our world uh, the tools at hand to confront existing problems. We have, to, we have also the opportunity now to raise consciousness, to affect good policies, and to make sure that um, these things are not done in vain, but are seen as being sustaining and sustainable uh, uh, factors going ahead as we're the guardians for future generations. I believe, uh, and I, I'm sure, uh, collectively, we all believe that we are a generation that is going to be passing on this particular consciousness and this particular heritage to future ones. Accountability becomes very important and also the fact that we are going to be uh, collectively conscious ambassadors for solutions is most important. I thank you very much. We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary Her Royal Highness, Princess Awana Kaoheleilani of Hawaii. Ano ai, ano ai ya oko. I'd like to acknowledge my friend, Mr. Bond, for again inviting me to be with you this day. On a day like today in the world that we find ourselves navigating, what matters? What matters? Who are we to one another? And what are we feeling in this moment? When does humanity arrive? Where do we begin? How do we live on this earth together? I've heard the concern for our Mother Earth, for the water, the environment, cries from millions, save the whales, save the seals, save the turtles, save the ocean, save the planet. Who saves us? Leadership, policy, and governance appear painfully focused on the economy. Rebooting global corporate extractive economies oblivious of the unprecedented environmental recovery occurring along our shores, our rivers, our valleys, and the very air that we breathe. Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, laws enacted, laws retracted, truth redacted. Why on earth must we create laws to act with compassion and empathy and above all, with respect. Respect, not just for each other and for our planet Earth, but also for ourselves. Respect decency. And honestly, is our planet Earth truly ours? Since its inception, the World Environment Day in 1974, many countries have come forward to host annual events aimed at heightened awareness for the good of the earth. However, since its inception 46 years ago, the U.S. has only once hosted 
the World Environment Day in 1974. Why? Why is that? As a leader and as a leading first global world beneficiary of corporate opportunism, shouldn't there be a better performance and demonstration of care? Has the U.S. become too wealth-driven, too corporate-led, and too governmentally blind? We view the world through our own doorways of perception. What we see in our backyard tells the story. Our Earth Mother, Papahanaumoku, is alive. She responds, sending in the tiniest virus, like an antibody, designed to cull the herd, to stop the global machinery, to slow us down, to quiet the noise. To let us hear our Mother Earth breathing, to see her wipe clear the tears staining our shores, in our resting places with our families, in relationship, recovering, we still survive. Now more than ever, we lift our voices quietly in prayer with you on a day like today, June 5th, 2020, World Environment Day. We lift it together in song, in praise with all of you, the Grandfather Sun and Grandmother Moon, Sky Father, Earth Mother, and the oceans and rivers. Water is life, and life and love truly matter to us all. We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary His Excellency Tabarero Sito, Ambassador of Kiribati and former President. On this World Environment Day, I greet you all, my beloved brothers and sisters, and wish you a happy World Environment Day. And I do so in the name of our most loving and most caring Mother Nature, who has nourished and sustained each of us and our loved ones and the entire human family and all other forms of life since the dawn of creation. On this occasion, we are reminded of the indispensable role that the environment and Mother Nature play in our survival, sustenance, and development. We now know from the study of natural sciences that we owe our origin and continuity to Mother Nature and the environment she embraces, from which we obtain the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the many good things that we enjoy in life. We also know from the study of the social sciences that as social beings, our happiness and well-being depends on the quality of the social and cultural environments in which uh, we are born and bred, in the homes and families and the neighborhood in which we were raised, the schools we attended, the faiths we belong to, the clubs we join and the society we live in. We have also learned that the greater and the richer the quality of the environment, physical and social, the greater and the richer is the quality of our lives. And the more contented we are with life and the more positive we become towards other humans and other forms of life and the closer we are to Mother Nature. It is time we rise with renewed power and commitment to fight and overcome the forces that have destroyed the richness, beauty, and splendor of our environment, and which have led to the current heartbreaking state of the world we see today. In the growing pockets of poverty, hunger, illiteracy, ill health, refugee crisis, human trafficking, terrorism, civil unrest, conflicts, and wars, and the related humanitarian crisis. We see it also in the ever-widening economic and social gaps, and in the increasing threats of climate change and climate-related disasters. We also see it in the breakdown of rich cultures and traditions that hold 
people together happily and peacefully and place human respect, dignity and rights at their hearts. We also see it in the proliferation of broken families and homes and the rise of orphanages. We also see it in the current COVID-19 pandemic, taking over the whole world with a formidable army of invisibly small killers defying the most technologically advanced defense and health systems in the world. All of these are glaring evidence of the sad failure of the Industrial Revolution and the models attached to it to maintain respect for the environment and to follow the guidance of the human conscience, the everlasting code of harmony between creatures and Mother Nature, as invisibly ingrained in the minds, hearts, and in the DNA of all human beings from the very beginning of human existence. Let us now bravely march forward with this mission, hand in hand, heart to heart, and soul to soul, and join voices and forces with the entire human family, and do whatever it takes to save, protect, and defend the health and wealth of the global environment and of Mother Nature. We must begin the fight from within ourselves by doing away with attitudes, mindsets, perspectives, and practices that harm the environment, and by adopting a way of life that is more caring for and respectful of Mother Nature, and by following the dictates of conscience supported by empirical evidence provided by the natural and social sciences. We must also learn from the great wisdom of the past and from the ways of our forefathers who lived in perfect harmony with their surroundings. Let us do away with our harmful and self-seeking ways driven by the greed for unlimited wealth, power and status, often to the detriment of the long-term health and wealth of the environment and Mother Nature and the general well-being of the entire humanity. We as leaders must take the lead in fighting and defeating the enemies of the environment and Mother Nature, beginning with adverse elements dwelling within our own selves before enlisting others to join the fight. Let us take our cue not only from the visible and tangible empirical facts of science and history, but also from the invisible yet most far powerful source of true wisdom, namely conscience, that has control over living and non-living matter in our planet Earth and the entire universe, so that we may restore order and harmony with our environment and Mother Nature and make the world a loving, caring and secure and peaceful home for all now and in the future. Thank you. We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary, Her Excellencies, Amina Gurib Fakim, former president of Mauritius. Ladies and gentlemen, on the February 19, 2019, the Federation of World Peace and Love, FAUPAL, launched the Global Declaration of the International Day of Conscience at the UN headquarters in New York. The declaration has now been translated into 41 languages and endorsed by people in 185 nations. This endorsement has already translated into a willingness to act and do things differently. When COVID struck, we finally realized and appreciated our interconnectedness to each and every species living on this planet and how each one of them is important for the functioning of the ecosystem that sustain our livelihoods. Our common and sustainable future will hinge upon conscious driven actions, how we take wise actions, exert positive influences in our societies, and enhance local, global cooperation and solidarity. Conscious driven actions will ensure that our air remains pure through reduction of greenhouse gas emission. By doing so, we protect each other from all the ills of a changing climate. Conscious driven action will also prevent us from further destroying our forests, 
safeguard our biodiversity, and give us cleaner oceans and waterways. As a human race, let us go back to what we started on this, what we stand for on this planet. Relieve our values through giving and sharing, and move away from the fast-paced daily lives which had defined all of us before COVID struck. Just like all positive actions, it starts with each of us. If we all make the pledge of conscience-driven actions, we will finally deliver on the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the ideals of leaving no one behind. The anthropologist Margaret Mead once said, and I quote, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that has ever has. Thank you for your attention. The challenges and insights that have been presented so far are profound and give us much to reflect on. As we do so, we may also consider how fortunate we are for the past efforts to preserve our environment by prior generations and what environment we will leave to future generations. This notion is encapsulated by the song, I'm Alive by Flight Lieutenant Harriet Tadakanda of the British Royal Air Force and One Voice. Please enjoy.
we now introduce the elements of wind and water as warriors fighting for the environment. We have traveled to the 21st century for a while now, and the current outbreak of the new coronavirus is still spreading continuously. Hmm, it's troubling. That is unfortunate. However, on the bright side, due to the reduction of human activity during this pandemic, the Earth finally gets a chance to breathe. Hey, I found that the United Nations has set up a lot of commemorative days for the sustainable development of the Earth, like World Environment Day on June 5th. It gives a message, there's only one Earth. It calls on people all over the world to raise awareness of environmental protection, to take actions, unite everyone's strength, and to protect the sustainable development of the Earth. Yes, and don't forget, there is also the inner environment, which is our conscience. We should routinely reflect on ourselves and listen to the voice of our conscience. It will help us find the serenity we need to gain wisdom, which can help others and ourselves to do the right thing. With the unity of both environment, we can truly protect the world. You're right! Conscience is not only the key to fighting the virus, but also the antidote for the sustainable development of the environment and humans. This is why the United Nations has designated April 5th as the International Day of Conscience to promote peace, inclusion, tolerance, understanding, and solidarity. Wow, look at this! The Declaration of the International Day of Conscience has already been translated into 53 languages, and people from 186 countries have already signed it. Let's respond together! Of course! Other than signing up ourselves, we can also invite our friends and families to endorse together. After all, unity brings strength. With everyone's conscience awoken, people can gain wisdom to do the right thing. Once we achieve global solidarity, we can survive the pandemic safely and avoid both natural and man-made disasters in the future. I wish everyone can be conscientious, let go of prejudice, achieve global solidarity, help to cooperate with one another, and share resources. This way, we can get through the pandemic together. I wish for the awakening of everyone's conscience. During this pause in the world, I hope we are able to humbly reflect on ourselves and use the wisdom of yin and yang balance to restart the era of conscience with love and peace. We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary His Highness Prince Rostislav Rostislavich Romanov of Russia. Good afternoon. My name is Prince Rostislav Romanov. I'm here on this very important day on the 5th of June to talk about the World Environment Day. It's a great honor to be here and I want to share my thoughts and feelings about this day and how the environment plays a special role in my life. I am a trained landscape painter and I have been painting landscapes since I was 16 years old. And being out painting landscape has given me great solace and comfort. But also I have noticed throughout my whole artistic career how the environment has changed rapidly from when I was 16 to now to the modern day. I used to be a painter of sunsets and sunrises and beauty and colour, but I'm now more drawn to the destructive powers of the storms that we are having at infrequent times of the year where we shouldn't be, and it's really concerning me and my mental health how these storms are getting more powerful every year and more destructive every year around the world. 
I realized that I want to make my garden something beautiful where I could come in and be inspired by the colors. I'm not planting plants just because of plants. I go to the, my local nursery to support my local community. And I look at the plants and I look at the colors that they produce and how they affect the insects wildlife around it. And I use it like I use my colors in my paints to create a canvas or an art piece. But being here, seeing the plants around me grow slowly and nurturing them to fulfill their potential and to make them grow stronger and to create new flowers in life has really affected me mentally that I never thought would. And it's changed my mental side of things. And I'm very blessed for that. I never thought it would. I never understood in the past how, how plants and taking care of a garden or nature in itself will affect me in a different way. I always painted it, but never taken care of it until now. And I understand the importance of it during this horrible pandemic has given me this different outlook on life, on nature, trees, how they grow and how they tell a story and how they blossom into something beautiful and how they live their life to a different time than we do and how this world has had a breather from all the carbon dioxide and all the emissions that we pump into this world. So I applaud the people of the world on this very special day of 5th of June on World Environment Day, that we have a chance, that we had a mini time to change and that we expand that change to something bigger and longer and more sustainable. We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary, His Excellency, Danilo Turk, former president of Slovenia. This year, we are celebrating the World Environment Day at the time of great stress. And we have a very good focus, the focus on biodiversity. I wish to congratulate the government of Colombia for the initiative the country of mega diversity, where biodiversity is an important feature of the country as a whole. And I congratulate Germany for their valiant support. And obviously, United Nations is always giving priority focus to environmental issues and to biodiversity. Biodiversity has always been with human race. Actually, we are very much part of the biodiversity of our planet and our survival depends on biodiversity. We are not always aware of that. And very often we link biodiversity mostly with the most sophisticated aspects of that. For example, with a variety of new medicines which are being developed with the use of plants and animals from different parts of the world. And there are many countries in this world where production of medicine based on biodiversity has both long tradition and has been a very important part of development. But today we have to worry. We have to worry about the balance of our habitat and we have to worry about the increasing stress. Now that stress on biodiversity has been increasing for a long time and it is linked to such phenomena like urbanization, deforestation, desertification, all these phenomena which have been taking place for a long time has affected biodiversity. Most recently, global biodiversity has been very adversely affected by the intensified global warming. This has added intensity to stress against biodiversity and created a host of new problems. Just think about the for fires that we have witnessed in various parts of the world in the past months, in the past year actually, in Australia, in Brazil, 
in the Congo area in Africa and in Siberia in northern parts of Asia. All these uh, fires can be described as natural phenomena, but they are not without link to our behavior. And most importantly, and something that has to be in the focus today is that they have very badly affected biodiversity in those areas. So working and acting against global warming is also acting in favor of biodiversity. We must be concerned about the regular loss of species of which we are informed from time to time. We have to be aware of that and we have to use the instruments that exist in the world already much better than we do at present. We have to remember that in 1992, the UN hosted the conference in Rio de Janeiro, which among their two main achievements included the Convention on Biodiversity. And as a result of the Biodiversity Convention, a host of new forms of cooperation, some very technical and other much, others much more related to the public perception, have been developed. We have to look at the achievements so far and the problems that need to be addressed. I would like to mention one problem in particular, and that is the problem of water and water resources. We see that most of the phenomena of global warming, including severe droughts, but also floods and other violent weather effects are being pursued, are happening through water. And water is becoming a scarcer commodity. Now, most importantly, in the future, we shall have more and more need for water. The growing population of the world and the growing need for water resources to generate energy, to help agriculture, will intensify. And in these circumstances, again, the question of biodiversity will be one of the most important ones. We have to try to link the care for the water and the care for biodiversity. I hope that this year, the biodiversity focus of the World Environment Day will help us to do more will help us to ensure that biodiversity problems come to the attention of the media world and come to the attention of the global public in general. We have to make sure that the connections between different aspects of development are clearly understood, that we understand what kind of stress on water is produced by urbanization, and consequently, what are the consequences of this on the global situation in biodiversity. We also have to understand the pandemics such as COVID-19 today are not without connection to our changing modes of life and to the fact that urbanization is taking more and more out of natural habitat and that as a result, the viruses which have been only linked to certain animals in the past are becoming more frequently transmitted to humans. This too has to do with biodiversity. So the world has many reasons to pay particular attention to biodiversity at this point in time. I hope that today the World Water Day will help us to pay more attention to this. We have to understand the importance of this link and we have to understand one very simple request or simple need for the future. We have to save biodiversity to save ourselves. I hope that this will be the message of the World Water Day, and I hope that the mankind will be able to save biodiversity to save itself. Thank you for your attention. We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary His Excellency Anthony Carmona, former president of Trinidad and Tobago. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, World Environment Day affords us the opportunity to inform and educate, mobilize political and institutional will, take stock of our achievements, not sitting on our laurels, and more importantly, recognize what must be done today and not tomorrow.
to save planet Earth. World Environment Day 2020 with STEAM Biodiversity is about protecting the full complement of life on Earth in all its manifestations and all its interactions. Biodiversity impacts every aspect of human health as it provides clean air, water, food, sources of medicine, and natural disease resistance and climate change mitigation. Deforestation, habitat loss, exploitation, unsustainable agricultural practices and climate change have pushed Mother Nature beyond her limit. The United Nations estimates that it would take 1.6 Earth to meet the demands that human make of nature each year. If currently sustained, we are on the verge of our food and health systems collapsing. The COVID-19 pandemic has given us a respite, a cause for pause, to critically assess this current exploitative path of mankind. World Environment Day 2020 is in sync with the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The 2030 Global Agenda, particularly. Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities. Goal 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. Goal 13, Climate Action. Goal 14, Life Before Water. Goal 15, Life on Land. Further, Article 13 of the Convention on Biological Diversity mandates its 196 signatories to A, promote and encourage understanding of the importance of and the measures required for the conservation of biological diversity, as well as its propagation through media and the inclusion of these topics in educational programs. Dr. Hong and the Federation of World Peace and Love, FOPAL, must be commended for this enlightening forum, given credence to Article 13. It is a tough fight, and the realities are stark. On the 11th of February 2020, the BBC reported, and I quote, up to one-fifth of the Amazon rainforest is emitting more CO2 than it absorbs. Results from a decade-long study of greenhouse gases over the Amazon basin appear to show around 20% of the total area has become a net source of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. One of the main causes is deforestation. What a telling example of the deleterious effects of biodiversity destruction. Traditional cultures and values hold mother nature and the environment in its highest esteem, emphasizing preservation and conservation. On the 21st of May, 2020, we celebrated World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development, exploring facets of culture globally, including caring for the physical environment. Diversity for biodiversity may well be the answer. This is encapsulated by a strong statement from the Assembly of First Peoples and First Nations, and I quote, First Nations people can demonstrate how in asserting their land use and rights, economic initiatives can be both profitable and sustainable for future generations. This knowledge can be shared with industry for the betterment and survival of all peoples, end of quote. There exists in the world some 8 million plants and animal species. Only a fraction has been data-based in research, with research, development and experimentation of these various species. Remedies for our global health afflictions may well be found. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have the Point of Peer Wildfall Trust, contributing in great measure to the protection of biodiversity. The 50 odd year old Point of Peer Wildfall Trust, the second oldest in the world, has been engaged in pioneering work on wildlife, wildlife, wildlife conservation, replenishing different animal species at the Trust, including our scarlet ibis, the black-bellied whistling tree duck, wild muscovies, and the blue and gold macaws, decimated in part by virulent pollution. Regrettably, it is no longer about protecting man from beast, but rather protecting beast from man. The trust opens its doors daily to our future leaders in the form of preschool, secondary, and primary school children. Teachers and professors make the Wildfall Trust a biology and environmental class where school-based 
assessments are conducted, thus nurturing present and future champions of our environment. The environmentally conscious and informed student of today will be the policy maker of tomorrow. This model can be replicated by countries all over the world. Our schools have also pioneered with Carbon Zero in Institute of Trinidad and Tobago, an environmental NGO of which I am the patron, pledging to protect the environment by actualizing the following objectives. One, achieving carbon neutral status. Two, taking the lead in creating awareness and promoting reduction in greenhouse gases. Three, writing the manual of sustainable living in the Caribbean region. And four, fostering the next generation of leaders to embattle climate change and pollution. During my presidency, my wife and I launched school-based initiatives to encourage the planting of more fruit and moringa trees on the president grounds and throughout my country. The moringa tree is a useful tool in the prevention of climate change and global warming. The rate of absorption of or assimilation of carbon dioxide by the moringa tree is 20 times higher than that of general vegetation and 50 times higher when compared to the Japanese cedar tree. I am convinced that these child advocates will become adult advocates who will contribute sustainably to our bi biodiversity and in the environment in the future. Young people are demanding more of their leaders. I am reminding of the telling statement by, made by the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez in September 2019 at the Climate Change Summit in New York. He stated, and I quote, the ticket to enter the Climate Change Summit was not a beautiful speech, but a concrete plan of action, end of quote. Confrontational advocacy is now becoming the norm because those holding the reins of power are simply not listening or adhering to the legitimate and well-grounded concerns of scientists and the cognoscenti on climate change and biodiversity. The classrooms of the world are boiling with militancy because children today and generations tomorrow stand the most to lose when human development is being outstripped by economic systems insensitive and indifferent to the fundamentals of environmental protection and conservation. If we are serious about economic sustainability, features of ecotourism can provide exactly that. There is more money to be made in keeping our wildlife and animals alive than selling them dead. I have seen the Kenyan model as a work where poachers are reformed to become saviors, saviors of biodiversity through retraining with year-round viable jobs. Nations of the world must utilize World Environmental Day to assess where they are in the queue in the fight against climate change and the destruction of our bio biodiversity. Are we honestly satisfied by what we are doing individually and collectively? I am impressed that the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, was prepared to table a bill in her parliament that targets zero carbon emission in her country by 2050, setting targets for carbon and biogenetic methane emissions between 24 to 47%. She further proposed the establishment of an independent advisory climate change commission. What is remarkable is the groundbreaking statement of the Daily New Zealand Guardian newspaper, and I quote, for the Guardian, reporting on the environment is a priority we give reporting on climate, nature, and pollution the prominence it deserves. Stories which often go unreported by others in the media. For our species and our planet, we are determined to inform readers about threats, consequences, and solutions based on scientific facts, not political prejudice or business interests. End of quote as a means of addressing the egregious acts of impunity as it relates to the environment. I wish to propose once again that world leaders advocate for and support the establishment of an environmental court, which I will call the International Environmental Court, without prejudice to the mandates of existing institutions. The International Environmental Court will be telling miscreants responsible that you can run, but you cannot hide. 
if we have an if we have an iota of conscience, we should adhere to intergenerational and intergenerational principles so that we leave planet Earth a better place for the citizens of the world to come. Further, corporate social responsibility must work hand in hand with corporate social conscience to effect same. Finally, I always tell people to, to effect transformational change. I will keep banging my head against the walls of indifference, apathy, and intransigence. But you know what? My head will not crack. The walls will. So great is my belief in fighting and defending the just and honorable cause. of protecting our environment, in, safe, in safeguarding our biodiversity, and in bringing global awareness to the ravages of climate change. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are pleased to welcome remarks from the visionary, His Royal Highness, Prince Michel of Yugoslavia. Hello, I am Prince Michel of Yugoslavia. My paternal grandfather was Prince Paul, the last regent of Yugoslavia. And my maternal grandfather was the last king of Italy, King Umberto. I grew up in Europe, then lived partly in the United States of America and partly in Europe. I am delighted to support the World Environment Day, which is celebrated today June 5th, 2020. I am passionate about the environment and photography. This makes me look at the beauty of our planet, but I am saddened by the destruction we create all around us. I wish that we as a species would stop behaving as if we own the planet, but realized we are part of it. My master of philosophy, Mr. Alain Forger, told me that man's level of consciousness is out of sync with his technological level. Man has not changed, but his technological capabilities have. It is not a question of man and nature, as man is part of nature do not contrast the one with the other. We will only stop damaging our environment once we have raised our level of consciousness, once we have grown away from anxiety conditioned by fear that makes us seek escape in an extravagant consumer-based compensation. The higher the level of consciousness to which we aspire, the more we will be in harmony with what surrounds us. I am again very happy to celebrate the World Environment Day with all of you today, and I thank you for your time. On behalf of the Federation of World Peace and Love, we wish to express our profound appreciation to His Imperial Highness, Prince Ermias, and the distinguished visionaries who have joined us for today's forum. The challenges they have identified and the conscience-based solutions presented lay the groundwork to achieve a sustainable environment for future generations. As with in environmental challenges, Fopal believes that conscience holds the solution for, to overcome the challenges that we face and will guide us to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which lay the groundwork for world peace. We thank all of our friends who have been with us along the way to realize our shared vision for a world of peace with love and conscience. We hope you will join us on July 25th as we celebrate the one year anniversary since the United Nations designated April 5th as the International Day of Conscience. We look forward to celebrating this transformational day with you. See you then. Our world is facing daunting challenges. Solutions? Conscience. 
promoting a culture of peace with love and conscience. The United Nations declared April 5th as the International Day of Conscience. The day of 5th April, from now on, provides an opportunity for the international community to promote peace, tolerance, inclusion, understanding and solidarity in order to build a sustainable world of peace, solidarity and harmony. April 5th, 2020, the first International Day of Conscience. Over 30,000 people joined the online observance. The world is facing the biggest challenge since World War II. We need the power of conscience now more than ever to protect the environment and safeguard humanity. Together, we can change the world with conscience.